Welcome to today's rebroadcast podcast number 55 titled The Spirituality of Harnessing the Power of Prayer with Mike from COT on the End Generation Project Original Air Date March 22, 2024 Join us as we explore daily excellence with renowned speakers studying topics such as biblical eschatology, recovery from addiction, and alcoholism. Today's episode is hosted by Michael from Council of Time as we uncover the latest global insights. We're privileged today to tap into the wisdom of the Council of Time's host, Michael, whom is one of the most important Christian voices of this generation. For deeper insights, visit the official Council of Time website linked in the description. Join our mission of disseminating God's word and carrying a message of recovery to those still suffering from addiction around the world. We are here to bring hope in these critical and upside down times. Your support drives our mission and unlocks the transformative potential of living a meaningful life of truth and sobriety, preparing for what the Bible calls perilous times. Time to get prepared. If you enjoy these videos, we have a brand new locals community now as well as Patreon. Please see our latest poll, then we have a better idea what our beloved viewers prefer. We have lots more information on that in the description. In short, we are blessed to have the chance to run a full-time channel thanks to our beloved subscribers. See the link in the description. Okay, now, before we get into today's rebroadcast podcast, The Spirituality of Harnessing the Power of Prayer, Episode 55, let us say that this channel is growing at an incredibly fast pace, revealing the hunger believers seek in these in-generation times. What a blessing that the Most High is using us for that extra reach around the world as our content is translated into 12-plus languages. As we journey together, we're committed to maintaining this podcast ad-free. Your subscription enables us to do this full-time. Please remember to subscribe, like, and message us for daily excellence in our life. We love hearing from you and the so many fantastic stories. We love all of you. Now, time for today's podcast, The Spirituality of Harnessing the Power of Prayer, in Generation Projects Rebroadcast Podcast number 54, with Mike from COT. Blessings to all. Welcome, everybody out there, to the... Just in case you don't know, my name is Mike. Where do we begin? All right, guys, you know, today is Revelation still, but more Q&A than anything else. More Q&A. Let's get everybody up to speed, shall we? Kind of glad the uh, schedule was left open for this week. Because of all the changes. And for a couple of you, yes, yes, I am actually looking for two eruptions. Don't worry about where. But uh, two eruptions, yes. We have a very geologic world. It is very active. And we're about to get a whole lot more active. All right? A whole lot more active. I'm going to ask you guys something, though, before we start with the questions. Many people during this year are going to attribute much activity to weapons, right? Earthquake weapons, weather weapons. It's important that you guys know with the nomenclature and what those weapons actually are, what they can and cannot do. No more myth. The actual deal. Okay? Uh, so, we're going to have to go over that. The weapons. All the weapons that deal with, they call it geological influence and weather mechanical influence. Mechanical, because you have to do things in a very specific way to augment weather conditions. You also have to know about what farmers do on a regular basis regarding weather. Once you know that, right? Once you know, oh, for example, not the mythos harp, but the real harp, the harp that people have actually worked on. Has anybody here worked on harp? Anybody here ever been assigned a harp to a harp station? It's not called a harp station, by the way. If anybody here has been assigned to harp in any capacity, let me know so we can authenticate. And it's possible, right? We can have you on the air with me and two other guys to discuss what these things do and what they don't do, right? Because there's been so many occasions when people thought 
Harp was doing something. Harp is antiquated technology. In other words, it's outdated. Most of what they're using now is deep under the earth in the ice. It's not Harp, right? Um, they do other things. Harp has minimal capabilities at best. So it's important that you guys know the absolutes. Some of you guys have heard about Project Bluebeam, right? There have been people with DARPA, uh, and it's important that you guys know the ins and outs. The beginning of Bluebeam, right? The progression of Bluebeam, it turned into two specific projects which yielded six different devices. Six, right? Um, so it's important that you know this. Here's why. A lot of people are going to say, well, this is people, this is man is doing this, and that's not going to be the case. Somebody's going to say, look at that thing over there. That must be blue beam, and it's going to be real. It's not going to be fake. Now, I don't want people to get, uh, you know, to have uh, confused themselves because they bought the Internet edu education on, on certain devices. There are people who have worked on these things who have designed components for these things, right? And we just happen to have access to a few of them, just so you know that. So the more you know about those things, the less you're going to be prone to attribute real weather phenomena, real geological phenomena, and real atmospheric phenomena, the less you're going to attribute that to mankind. People forget about our father who said he would do specific things. And sometimes when the Lord says he's going to do something and then people turn around and say, nope, it's not God, it's somebody else doing it, right? That's a big issue. CERN, we need updates on CERN, right? There are some things that CERN can do. There are some unknowns about CERN. But if you know the limitations of CERN, if you know exactly how that machine works, if you know the properties of that machine, and every time they turn it on, what each component produces, right? How likely each component is going to affect other things. You will be better informed. And it's about being better informed, not about knowing all the specifics of a device. It's not, I'm not going to tell you that everybody out there is wrong either. No. I just need, there, there's a certain level of education that all of us need with these devices so that we can have a good outlook on what's happening so that we will not uh, let our imagination run away with us. Then you attribute something as fake when you need to know it's real to act accordingly because people are going to make that mistake. They're going to make a big mistake, right? And sometimes the fear that people, things that they're afraid of, right? Sometimes they're unwanted, but you'd be surprised how many times People have been fearful of something nobody ever mentioned. And they were, they hit it right in the bullseye. There are so many people out there that have hit it right in the bullseye, which means they have said something or they had a warranted fear about something that no one was talking about. And they themselves had no insight into devices or these programs, but they hit the bullseye, right? So if you're better informed on what these things actually are, you're going to be good to go. You're going to be good to go. You'll be far more informed than the average person. You can prepare yourselves too, because some of what we will encounter is going to affect your brain. For example, time slips, right? A time slip. If a person had a time slip, and I discussed this back in, what was that, 2010 or something like that, uh, if a person experiences a time slip, say you're walking out your front door, all of a sudden, the entire landscape is different. I mean, the entire thing is different. And you start seeing, you know, things that have long been dead and some things that don't exist yet, right? You may be a little confused. If you and another person who does not know you, you just happen to hear about it, and they see the exact same thing you see. At that point, you're going to say, uh-oh, oh, this may not be mental. This may be, may be something to this. Then when another person comes out, and they describe the exact same thing, you're going to have a problem if you know nothing about it. You're going to have an issue, right? A big issue. You're going to have an issue. You're not going to know where to 
uh, categorize this and it can cause a person great fear. By the way, time slips, this phenomena has happened in three countries so far and counting. And what I mean, it actually happened. People, this, different people from different walks of life go to a specific place, right? They start seeing the exact same thing, the exact same people, right? They see cars that were existed back in the 20s. People walking around with canes and stuff they don't have today. Children playing, they can smell everything. The smells are different. Everything is different. And they all describe the same phenomena before and the same phenomena after. And everybody else does not know where they went for a few seconds or two or whatever the case is, right? But they all describe the same thing. It's starting to happen everywhere, right? Everywhere. In some cases, people have taken video with their little iPhones of things that it's impossible to take a video of. Professional folks have been confused. Lands have been talked about that nobody ever heard of. People have heard people speak languages. That do not exist. Can you imagine if you went uh, to a store or something like that and everybody started discussing a city you never heard of in your life? Right? Can you imagine that? Same IDs, right? They have the same, you know, clothes and same everything, but they're talking about something that does not exist. How could you categorize that? Is that everybody having some sort of psychosis event or what? Hmm. When too many people start doing it, there is something to it. I'm going to see the exact same thing when people that don't know each other describe the exact same thing. Something is wrong somewhere. Right? Something is wrong. Well, you might want to arm yourselves with things just like that. Because if a person can be deceived, tricked, manipulated by such things, whether real or fake, many are going to endure it. They will. And I hope they hold on. See, a lot of people won't be able to categorize this. It's going to give people heart attacks. It's going to mess people up pretty bad. It's going to confuse folks. All right? There are too many cases in the world where these things are, are increasing at an alarming frequency. Right? Entire units, military units, have described things that uh, nobody can account for. Right? Nobody. There are some popular theories you guys need to know about. Something the world spends a lot of money on. You need to know about it. Because what they're doing is shaping the interpretation of a future world that has not come yet. They're shaping it already. So they're planting ideas and philosophies, and doctrine behind this new world, right? And everybody else is going to be in sync with it, except for those who did not hear it. You're going to be lost in the sauce. It's important that, as a believer in Christ, you be able to navigate every area of life. Every area. So, you have to be well-versed in these things, right? Not, not running away. Not that. Not going over to the crazy side either. Right? No, not that. No. We're talking about some very real things that you're going to have to be versed in and still function in life normally. Our normal, which is of high integrity. Right? Also, when you're hearing other people talk about things, one of two things is taking place. Either a person is just lying their socks off, or they are moved behind specific things they have experienced. They need the world to know it, right? So one of those two things are happening. If a person, in fact, is lying, if they're lying, well, then it's just going to be a lie. You don't have to live your life by it. But if they're telling the truth, it could save lives to have an understanding of what they're talking about. I'm going to ask you guys something. What could cause people to turn away from Christ in large numbers? What could that be? What could cause people to no longer 
consider the Bible, the gospel, the words of the Lord. Besides some Christians who go around beating people over the head with the Bible, besides those people, what else can cause a person to turn away from the faith? Because I'll, I'll share something with you. Every soul on this earth is going to have faith in something. Every soul. But if you have faith in the one thing, you're going to have minimal faith in everything else. So you're going to have faith in something. You're going to believe in something. There's no one on this earth that says, I don't believe in anything, and that's not true. They believe in something. The question is, what do they believe in? And what could cause the faithful, the ones who believe in Christ now, what could cause them to fall away from the faith? What could cause you to no longer believe in Christ? Some people are close to it, and nothing has really happened yet. But what could cause you to really question Christ? You've got to ask yourself that question, because you're going to have to face it soon. And it's a pass or fail, and it's final. If you fail, that's it. If you pass, you're going to be instantly hated. But you have to settle it now in your hearts and in your minds. You have to consider everything. That's one thing I will not do. I will not be caught off guard. So you never hear me saying, well, that, that doesn't exist and that's fake and this. I, you guys don't hear me saying that, do you? The one thing I will do, I consider much. And in every case of everything I consider, I always think of Christ, and I think of me, and I really check to see, is that moving my faith meter at all? See, if anything in the world moves my faith meter, I've got a problem, and I will go to that area to strengthen those areas that are weak concerning faith. I never ignore things. Fools do that, right? It's very foolish to do that because you're going to face something at some point that you never counted on. And it does no good running away. Many people, they want to run away. They have this idea that I'm not offending anybody, but they have this idea that God's going to take them away before anything ever happens to them. That's not true. All of us have a story where we have hurt ourselves on this earth. All of us have a story where things have fallen apart in our lives. All of us have a story that we did not escape some traumatic thing. All of us have that story. The Lord did not come and get us from that. He didn't come and get the other people all throughout history either. They went through their process. Sometimes we look at things as though the Lord has to come back and rescue his people. No, he does not have to come back and rescue anybody. He's the one allowing it all. What good parent out there would allow wild dogs to come in their living room and start eating their children? Would any of you do that? Would you allow wild dogs to come into your house and enter children and you sit and do nothing? You control the front door. If wild dogs are outside, you're not going to open the door. But now, and if you trained your children to fight wild dogs, if everything in their life was about training against the wild dogs, how to fight them, how to subdue them, how to overcome them, if that's what their whole life was about, then guess what? They're going to have a test one day. They're going to have a test dealing with those wild dogs. That means the parent is going to open that front door and say, this is your test. I hope and pray that you listened. Because if you took a shortcut, you're going to be torn to pieces. All right? What could cause a person to take a shortcut? Someone who is not authentic behind their training. Listen to what I'm telling you. The Lord does not play games, does he? He does not. People play games. The Lord has been quite consistent both with our spiritual unctions, what's moving us in the spirit, what we're able to comprehend, and his word. And he's been telling us over and over and over again.
that darkness is real. He has demonstrated to us that Satan desires to have you suffer, to be in a type of torment, to turn away from the Most High. A great test indeed is coming. And no person will ever leave this earth without going through their own special trial. Where everything they have will be tried. See, the Lord tries everything by fire. Everything, and no one skates free of that. He said that everything is going to be tried by fire that's dedicated to him to see if it's of God or not. If it's not of God, it's going to burn up in the hands of the one that holds it. Not for their destruction, so that they do not believe in falsehoods. Do you all see that? It'd be like you, if you had children, right? And he said, listen, guys, this is a real Bible, and this Bible is no good. And that Bible is no good, but you showed them what the real Bible was. And at first they were holding the real Bible, and they read it, and they said, I believe. But all of a sudden, they talk to friends and everything else, and they gravitate towards the fake Bible. All right? So they start holding it, reading it, believing in it. And it still seems like they believe in the real Bible. But no, they're believing more and more of the fake one. So one day, each fake Bible has a timer in it. And it's going to blow up. Right? That, that thing is going to blow up. When it does blow up, it's not blowing up so it hurts the children. That's not what's happening. It's blowing up so the children don't hold on to falsehoods. But do you know what happens to the kids when the fake Bibles burn up in their hands? They're going to be disheartened, disappointed. They're going to fall apart. Their whole foundation has just crumbled. And it's going to be totally up to them whether they're going to accept the truth in that moment or not. The Lord's going to do this with every falsehood in the earth. He's going to cause it to fail. If my life is based upon any falsehoods, the foundation of my life is going to crumble so my soul will be saved. That's going to happen to everybody else too. Everybody else. Any falsehood that we've had is going to crumble. Anything we've counted on that is of a falsehood is going to crumble. The only thing that will be left standing is God's truth, not this other truth. Are people ready for that? Have we inspected our lives to a degree where we know we're not holding falsehoods? The truth is no. Because how many times have people disagreed on the Bible? Somebody's version is flawed, isn't it? And we're going to be shown the right version. That's going to be to save our souls right before our total consummation. And secure when the children of God are secured. But every falsehood that we hold dear, it's going to be burnt up. Now, for some people, that's going to be people they hold in high, a high degree in their lives. They're not going to have them there. Every stumbling block you could ever imagine is going to be destroyed. Every single thing that causes you to stumble, you're going to lose it. You will not be able to have it. That means just about everything is going to be removed. Are you ready for that? See, we got to get ready for that. All right. I'm going to take a small break. When I come back, we're going to open up the Q&A. But you guys think on those things. I'll be right back in just a few minutes. So, oh, except for those guys. There we go, guys. We're back. Okay, let's go. Questions. What's the first one? First one. First question. First one. First one. I'm looking. Uh oh, wait a minute, guys. Let me get some mouse control here. Get some mouse control here. Here we go. We're back. Okay. Okay. Question, Brother Michael, will a time slip affect children too? Yes. Yes. But I want you guys to know something. Have you ever noticed? Have you ever noticed something about children? Listen to me carefully about children. If the parents of a child are anchored, and okay, so is a child, all of you parents who have children, to be strong for your children is not to be shaken. If you get shaken, they're going to be shaken. So be strong for them. That also gives you something, right, to stand firm for. It is very difficult to stand firm on your own. 
when you have children, if that parent, right, is is calm and assertive, collective, the child's environment is okay. Remember, parents, you are home to the child. You're the home, not not your place. You are. If you have the slightest attitude, that child can discern that attitude. And you will mess up their lives. You will. You'll just totally mess it up. So, right? um, remember that, please. Right? Any of you remember when you were tiny, you knew the disposition of your parents. You knew what their state of mind was, what emotions they had. Children are extremely sensitive to that. So make sure you remember that. Somebody asked me something about the two witnesses. What did they say? Regarding the two witnesses, how are they overcome? Well, they're going to kill him, right? We're, we're, gi- we're not given uh, greater, listen, for, for any greater detail than what's in the Word of God, right? I tend not to go into those places with those subjects. God gives us revelation. It's enough to know that the two witnesses are going to be killed, okay? But then they're going to be raised up. They're going to be called up to the heavens. Now, in what manner these things will happen outside of what the Bible tells us? Nobody, nobody knows. They can speculate all day, but it's just that. It's just speculation. Somebody says, are any of the seals open? Personally, I believe they are. I do believe they are. I don't believe they're going to open. I believe they're, they are open. That's what I believe. Hmm? Somebody says, you and Angela talk. That's my fault. But we have one day left in the week. We do. We have one day left in the week. When Angela, when we get on air with COT, it'll be by phone, right? By telephone. So we'll still try to make that deadline because I want to turn here this week. If not this week, it will certainly be at the beginning of next week. In fact, I haven't told her yet, but uh, AM Bible studies is a good idea, right? And a joint show, especially for because I don't really address female. I don't address females. Um, and so Angela would be the perfect candidate to get some of those, uh, some of the other issues through to me, right? So I can actually address them. Somebody says, Brother Michael, question, why is grace and mercy removed at the end for us, but not our great, great, great grandparents? Well, it's only going to be removed for those who are alive at the time of Christ's coming. That's all. Those who are alive at the time of the coming of Christ will see the end process. Right? Well, it's just like the rapture. You, you guys hear about the rapture all the time, right? Well, so did your great, 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 great grandparents. They did not have a rapture, right? They didn't. Neither did those who came after them and those who came after them and those who came after them and those who came after them. They looked for it. But it just didn't come. Why? Because that is for the end when everybody is, uh, those who are alive at the time of the coming of Christ. Now, last night we read, or, or night before last, we read about those who are going to be alive at the coming of Christ. And many of them were killed for the word of God, right? They lived during the time of the beast. And the beast will seek out and kill Everybody he can at that time who will not accept the mark of the beast. It seems like there's only two options at the time of the beast, right? To either get the mark or to continue to serve the Lord and die. Well, if the mark of the beast comes out, you know, if it were to ever come out, uh, I'm dead. I'm going to be dead. But I say, so what? Yeah, they're doing me a favor if they do that, right? Don't be afraid of death. To us, there is no death. There's only a transition to somebody outside of Christ. They have to worry about death, not us. I'm going to keep going until I can't go anymore. I am. And then when they, if, if I get locked up or whatever the case is, and the Lord has already showed me a degree of that. That's why I don't live by illusions. I, I do not live by illusions, right? What the Lord has shown me uh, would probably make a person quit because I believe in what the Lord shows me. But he showed me in, in, a, in a place. And it was me and this other guy left, and we didn't have any food or drink. And I looked down at my arm, right? I could see my arm was real slim, skinny. 
And uh, I had these. Uh, you could see marks, right, where my skin was so dry. It's, it was cracking. I could see that. And I was almost at the end of my rope. Even in this vision, I was starting to lose hope. I'd gone so long. I helped as many as I could. But at the end of the matter, I was stripped of everything, right? I was starving to death, left in some sort of a compound. And me and this other guy, and I was trying to encourage him not to give up. And the whole time I was telling him not to give up, I was giving up on the inside, right? But then he ended his own life. He ended his life. And after he ended his life, nobody else was in that compound but me. And nobody could get out the compound, right? And I was real skinny, just losing. The moment, the moment, listen, not the moment I said I can't take anymore, but the actual moment where I'd given it everything I could, where I could, I was barely holding on. I saw these vortices in the air. And they were, they were these swirling colored things. And at that moment, I knew what it was. I knew it was Christ. I knew that was my deliverance. When I saw them, but he came not at the beginning, not in the middle. It was at the very end when I could bear it. I, I couldn't take anything else. I said, what's the point? That's all I was saying inside for many days. I said that what's the point What's the point I could, I was barely alive, but I held on with all I could. And right at the end, when I was ready to throw in the towel, because I was really, really ready to throw in the towel. That's when I saw those vortices. Beautiful vortices. And that's when I knew he didn't forget me. In that vision, it felt like Christ forgot me. It was an empty camp. Most everybody there was dead, right? It was just me. Just me. And it felt like the Lord had forgotten me. It felt like I was forgotten. And I, was, I wasn't hanging on to I wasn't doing well. I was about to give up. I was really about to give up. Right at the moment when I was about to give up, I saw those vortices in the sky. And I knew it was him, and, and that was that. Yeah. So he has shown me a pretty rough road. And believe me, it, it's been unfolding just like that. Right? And that's not going to alter my path. That's what he showed me. So, so be it. So be it. If God showed you the end, of your own life, would you still serve him? If you knew that by serving him, you're going to go through some things, would you just give up throwing the towel right now? I'm not doing that. I saw a rough time. Is it worth it to assist people knowing that you'll receive no credit here on this earth? Yes, it is. It is worth it. It is worth it. It's worth it. And that's just the way that is. How many of you would serve the Lord if you were to get no credit on the earth and minimal favor left in the hands of mankind? You knew that you would suffer. Would you still serve the Lord with all of your heart? See, I'm not doing this for some reward. I'm doing it for real, not for a reward. Not so everybody knows who I am. No, not so that, uh, you know, I can brag to anybody either, but I'm doing this for real. When you do something for real, you want others to be secured. That's why I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see. Military recall beginning. Uh, they've been recalling people. Uh, guys, listen. I have been. Uh, there have been a couple of folks and colleagues who have been fighting because they're being jostled around too much. Maybe some of you know some folks like that, right? They're, they don't want to let anybody go, especially those who have uh, those who have uh, been involved in certain things. These uh, these people, they don't want to let anybody go. The military doesn't, so they keep people hanging or dangling by a thread. So, well, it's it's been happening to a few people. They've been put on standby. Some people have gotten phone calls and they're on standby. Some people have had their, uh, they had a termination date coming up, which means in some cases you, you have to stay in shape and maintain your personal responsibilities for about 15 years. And some people that time has been extended indefinitely. So uh, that's because of this election. 
And it's because of the events that surround this election. They anticipate horrific things this election. And I suspect they're going to make the move this election. Hmm? Okay. All right, guys, let me get your questions lined up. Let me get you guys in place. Now, if listen, if I miss your question, right, just simply ask it again, and I'll get to it. I'll get to it as fast as I can get to it. Someone says, question for someone who, who is listening but can't interact. Check, question, can, can a faith not tested but trusted? And why can't it be trusted? Can a faith not test it but trust it? And why can't it be trusted? Are you saying can faith? Restate that one. Hey, clarify that one for me. I don't want to mess it up. Please, restate that. When in April does a third wave hit? I'll refine that date for you, 37. There's a cluster of, uh, we have a cluster of pulses inbound that are they're going to take this planet in April. They will. From all of the inbound pulses that we have gotten, there, there are certain types which were at specific energy levels that do specific things to the planet. And so that's what I've been categorizing so that when we detect one and we get its energy uh, uh, fingerprint, we can then go back to the charts and say, well, this one did this, so this one will be more likely uh, to do that, right? Things of that nature. Somebody says the next is 489 connected to the eclipse coming in April 8th. I think the Bible is relevant. It is the only book I'm aware of that's relevant through all aspects of life, right? So when somebody has an idea about any part of the Bible that is relational or overlaps to events that we have, you'll often find that uh, for some reason they they stay relevant throughout time, right? They do. They stay relevant throughout time. If you ever find something that always happens, given certain events, and you found a principle, right? Or, or I should say you, you found a result of a principle. So the Word of God is not, one should not limit the Word of God to what they understand, but to be very observant concerning all of it, right? It is true. Just observe and see. Now, as far as I'm, I'm no authority in God's word, God is his own authority, right? I'm an observer just like you are. Um, but as far as relevancy, I, I believe the entire Bible is relevant to, to all of our lives, right? All of it. All of it, all of it. If somebody could refine that question in faith, I can get to it. Kennedy, Kennedy, um, uh, Leo 07, the part, the part that's, uh, strangest, can a faith not be tested, but trusted? And why can't it be trusted? Revised. Are you saying can faith not be tested? Is that what you're saying? Can faith not be tested? But it can be trusted? Somebody, uh, well, while you're getting that, I have get that clarified. Are they talking about faith not being tested? Can it not be tested? Um, but it can be trusted. Clarify that part. Who are the two witnesses? Uh, the two witnesses. We'll go over that. That takes context. It's in the Bible, but it takes uh, context. And it, it won't be, you see, a lot of people have determined that the two witnesses is going to be this person, that person, this person, that person. When we go over the whole contextual, uh, the content of the word concerning the two witnesses, I think you'll be surprised. I think you'll be surprised, but but uh, appreciative of what the Lord is doing. I do. I do. 18, 11, and 12 about to happen again. They could. They very well could. It could. I'll tell you something, though, right? Throughout all of history, normally when people are really, when they start to worry about something and it becomes public and too many people start worrying about the one thing, the one thing never takes place. It's always something you didn't count on. Always. 
It just seems to be that way, right? It seems to be that way. So, you know, we'll we'll see. Okay, let's see. Yeah, Rob and I still don't that that word says can can a faith I need to need that part clarified. Can a faith be be uh it says can a faith not be tested but trusted? Right. Clarify that part, can a faith is he does he mean that faith or is that the the word we're looking for? Somebody says who attacked the Russian in Moscow at the concert today? Uh, who do you think that was? Who do you think? The Ukraine, right? Is is the Ukraine is not gonna back down from Russia. Russia is not gonna stop their pursuit of the Ukraine. They're always gonna have this tit for tat thing going on, right? Are there operatives in the Ukraine? Yes, but nobody should talk about them because that would be treasonous. They would put nations at risk. Suppose someone spilled the beans on the entire situation of the Ukraine, and because of that, Putin launched a nuclear weapon or some heavy uh, artillery at, at certain cities, killing a lot of people. Then, essentially, whoever spilled the beans and blood's going to be on their hands, correct? Sometimes... They keep things from everybody so as not to escalate things to that level. Right? Can you guys see that? They don't want to escalate things to a to, to a level beyond what it already is. They want to do that. You mentioned on uh, Paul Begley two weeks until Israel's attacked in Centimary. I said I would not be surprised. Don't be surprised if Israel is attacked within a two-week period. Don't be surprised if America is burning, right, this year. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. Those are my words. Don't be surprised if that happens. In other words, you cannot, nobody can take that off the table. These guys are quite serious about what they're planning and what they, what they intend to do. And they have been in every avenue. Right? They have been infiltrating every single avenue of life within the USA, within the Western uh, way of living. These guys have been at work. They're not going to rest until they absolutely have us on fire. They will not rest until we burn. They will not rest until that happens. And if they have to send, you know, a million people of their own people to their deaths to make sure that we're burning, they'll do so. They'll do so. Listen, I'm telling you right now, there, there are 10-year-old children that will put on a vest full of bombs and walk into a hotel and, and you know, set the thing off. This is how committed these children are. This, uh, this issue between Hamas and Israel has done nothing but produce evil on a brand new level, right? Because now you have children children but they're not going to cover what the children have been doing they're not going to cover the fact that some children waited until israeli soldiers got down into a tunnel and it was a child who pulled the pin right they're not gonna these people because and you have to put yourself in everybody's shoes right the, the lord made us the way he did for a reason you guys are sensitive to all, you can see the truth of all sides. When you put yourself in the shoes of Hamas, in this respect, though, put your shoe, put yourself in, in, in as a, a person who lives in Gaza, your child. All you know is Gaza. And all you know is that this these people are killing my people. You don't know about the details, right? So when you see your dad die, when you see your uncle die, when you see your friends die and everything else, you're going to be upset. You're going to want revenge. And so you're going to grow up with hatred in your heart towards these other people who are doing nothing but evil things because that's all you see. This is in a child's mind. They don't know the complexities of war. They don't know the history of how these things have started. They don't know that. Right? So these kids, I'm telling you, they are committed beyond belief. And they are dedicated to causing nothing but absolute destruction to Israel and anybody who supports Israel. Because of what they perceive them to be. Right? Just like us, we all know that as a child... 
You believe things to be a certain way, and then when you grow up, you learn the truth about those things, right? It is very difficult to change the mind of a child. Very difficult. So darkness has been produced. It is that genie is not going back into the bottle. It's not. There are too many children over there who have a heavy disdain for Israel. They're going to do everything they can to avenge their parents. In their faith, vengeance, right? Vengeance is actually something that is taught to them, something that their God wants them to, to, to go and get. We're taught to leave vengeance alone. They're taught to go and take vengeance. That having vengeance upon your enemy is pleasing to their God. This is, can you talk about Haiti in the United States using Kenya as a proxy? Well, the dynamics, that's a complicated, long-standing uh, issue that many have turned a blind eye towards. Right? If, if, for example, if, if this warlord or these combination of warlords had not you know, made their move on Haiti, everybody would have ignored Haiti to this very day. Even though, right, the world looks at Haiti right now, this and oh, people are dying, people have been dying. Truth be told, people have been dying. In fact, more people have died uh, on any given day in the past than they have right now, and that's with the warlords and everything falling. Think about that. So they've had worse, these are not the worst moments Haiti has had. Haiti has had very terrible moments, even with an installed government. He is being used by many nations, which makes Haiti a very dangerous conversation for someone who knows the details about Haiti. Because then you start, you, the only way to explain that is to tell state secrets. Uh, that's not going to happen. That won't happen. And I, I would say that uh, have an understanding that Haiti is more like somebody went in and took somebody's house and turned it into a big training ground. Right? Training area. Think of it that way. Are the people suffering? Yes, and they have been. They have been suffering for many, many, many years. Right? I mean, many years. So I have an understanding of that because that's a terrible situation. It's just, it is, it's what's terrible is that it takes the media reports a story and then people are sympathetic behind it. Listen. We're Christians. Why does it take the media to get us to be sympathetic to anything? Don't we have discernment? I'm telling you right now, you have discernment. And the moment you don't think about yourselves, but you start thinking about everything else, you're going to be very sensitive to everything in the world. If we would stop looking away saying, well, I don't want to see that or that or that, and actually look into the real Right situations that are happening in the world, we can make a prayerful difference. We can. Forgive me if I get passionate, but I'm not the only one with discernment. If a dummy like me can, can have that, you know, ability, then surely everybody else can too. The problem is, if we're all tied up in our own personal situations, you're not going to see anything outside of yourselves. Look away from yourself from time to time and look wholeheartedly into everything else and don't turn away. Look at the whole thing, the painful things, the not so painful things and see the truth. Haiti has been like that. Haiti is, there are terrible places in this world that are absolutely ignored until the media starts talking about it. Then all of a sudden it becomes some global issue. Why does that happen? But there are people in our lives that if they don't say anything, they're going to be ignored. There are people right now, some of you, some of you specifically, I was praying for early, early this morning. You haven't said a word, but you were on my heart, which tells me something in your life has been upended. You're just not telling anybody. Doesn't matter why, you're just not telling anybody, right? All of us, we have that discernment. That discernment is real. And all we have to do is start looking with care, I mean, wholeheartedly into somebody else's situation. Lay your life to the side from moment to moment so you can see everything about somebody else. This world is stingy. It is. 
you all know it. This world is all about me, me, me. That's all people care about is me, me, me. Who's going to care about the other guy more than their own life? At the end of the day, people want to make sure they're okay. Dare to be different. Okay, I totally lost my place in questions here. I don't want to get worked up, not just yet. It's already hot in here, right? Well, wait a minute. Uh, let's see. Good to see you, BBH. That's Big Bear. Big Bear hugs. Let's see. 37 had another question in there somewhere. Okay. I'm going to start here. I'm going to start here, guys. If I missed your question, forgive me. I'm going to start right now. Let's see. Somebody says, in the context of other beings, mermaids, werewolves, shapeshifters, etc., the Bible says nothing was made outside of Christ. Outside of Christ. But we also know that the fallen tamper with some of creation, yes. How can we tell what God created and what's produced of tampering? Are there any of these of the life forms that acknowledge Christ as Lord and Savior? Well, let me put it to you this way. Nothing was made outside of the word of God. Nothing. So creation exists. Now creation is empowered to create. Just like you're empowered to create. Right? The fallen angels went outside of God's prescribed way and corrupted creation. But God knew about it. God knew about it. God knew everything they corrupted. Right? Keep in mind, God sent the flood, yes, but he was not pressured by what they did. You know what really got to the Father is that men were so easily corrupted by sin. You know that, don't you? They were so easily corrupted by sin. Anyway, even in the book of Enoch, which goes over that quite well, these fallen angels made it with women. They had offspring. This offspring, they became rulers and kings in the earth. What do people do with kings in the earth? They follow them. They emulate them. What do people do with rich people in the earth? They follow them. They emulate them. They look toward them, right? They begin to live just like they do, just like the days we live in right now. Anyway, when people emulate the rich and famous, not knowing who they really are, they also deny that anything is wrong with them. So they kind of protect them to a degree. They justify them. They enjoy the ways of iniquity that are taught from them. And corruption oozes all throughout the earth, just like today. Most people think nudity is okay. Many people think cursing is okay. A lot of people think that the abominations of the living God are okay, and this time they are not. A lot of people believe it's okay to talk about somebody else. It is not. That's an abomination to the most time. A lot of people believe blame is okay. It is not. People justify violence. That's wrong. So just like it was in the days of Noah, so it is right now today. Right now today, it is just as corrupt. Now these other species, the corruption of the fallen angels existed before the flood and also after that. Are they in society today? Yes, but they have pretty faces. In days long past, there were creatures. Right? What are the ancient stories told of a thing called Veracucha? He wore a mask. He was quite large. He loved the people he governed, but he was just a king. One of his people asked to see his face, and he said, I can't. Because if you saw my face, you would die. He told them that because... They couldn't handle what he looked like, which means he was ugly, right? This thing was ugly. But anybody who's, ever, who's familiar with the writings concerning Viracucha, they know that he was attributed to be the one that ordered society, that taught about loving someone else and caring about somebody else in their own little doctrines. But I can tell you face to face, this thing was nothing more than one of the fallen. The fallen angels cared for their children. They did. So some of the, the fallen angels themselves, through this act of rebellion, created something not sanctioned by the living God. 
which means they have the same freedoms we had. Listen, they have the exact same freedoms we have. The only difference is they may have had a different form. They may have been a lot bigger. They were certainly a lot wiser because they were educated, right? And some of them were so grotesque, they could not come around society. And some of them had an appetite just like an animal would have an appetite. Can you imagine an animal with a human brain who has an appetite for raw meat, but they can speak, think, you know, make things, devise things with the same intelligence? That would be a true monster, wouldn't it? An animal that has a craving for living meat, yet has a brain like yours and mine. Okay, so they had creatures back then like that that began to consume the acquisitions of men. They would drink the blood of men. They had a taste for blood, but they were, they had, they had a mind just like the people that live in the world today. Today, they have the same thing today, except the game is different. See, back then, back then they would hunt human beings. Back then they would run kingdoms much like they do today, but they would do little side things. Right now, today you have smart people in power that worship Satan in sneaky ways. They have their ceremonies. They have their priests. They have the red church. They have the black church. Their priesthood spans the entire planet. Every court is sealed by the priesthood. Every song is sealed by the priesthood. Every major network is prayed over by the priesthood television network every single last one of them even pbs you're not going to be on major television unless you go through their communications system you're not going to be on the internet unless you go through their equipment so that means they hold the key to communication they hold a key to what you see period it doesn't matter how innocent you are you you're going on a network that's been anointed by the red and the black church period they do dark practices, which is why most leaders have, have, they have already pledged themselves to secret societies like skull and bones and things of that nature. They do things they shouldn't do. Some of those folks are downright nasty. But they all have one common trait. They love money. They love money. They teach other people how to love money. Anyway, so you have those people that exist now. They're just not in some brutal form. But you also have other species in this world that man is not in communication with. All of those species have not overcome mankind, have they? Nope, they haven't. Why would a species that's much more powerful than humanity hide from humanity? Why would a species not overrun mankind when it had the opportunity when man was in low numbers? I'll tell you why. Just like those who come out of the bottomless pit. They will not breach that barrier of obedience with the Almighty God. That's why. Mankind does, but they will not. Do you know that? Listen, mankind is the one performing all the evil in this earth. Those other things, if God says no, they won't do it. It is mankind who's been given the freedom to do things on this earth. And what do they do with that freedom? They kill each other. They starve each other. They rule over each other. Mankind is doing this. Not all these other species that may or may not exist, not even the animals you may or may not know about. It's been mankind. It's as if even the demonic entities obey the barrier given by the Almighty, but mankind does not. But one day, one day, the final seal will be in place. The final seal of those who are marked for redemption. And when that seal is in place, anybody who has no seal will no longer have protection. That's when those things from the bottomless pit will go out and cause people to suffer for months on end. That's when men will desire to die, but death will flee from them. 
That's when people will find out they have never been alone and it's all been right here on this earth. But it's going to be too late then. Too late. I, You know what? This is going to sound weird, but I can almost guarantee you that these other things out there, they know who you are. They know exactly who you are. They know the truth of all of you. I can tell you right now, every demon in darkness knows the truth of all of us. Those demons know the truth of me. They know if I really believe or not. They know if I really have faith or not. They know what I disobey and what I obey. And they know me very well. They know you too. They know the people out there that are faking. And when the Lord says the final seal is in place, have at it. There is no human being that will be able to stop what's coming upon them. When they manifest and they bring your neighbors next door, and you just happen to be one of those who are not sealed, there is no place you can run. There is no place you can be protected. Mankind will be tormented. Now, you may ask, why would God do something like that? So the better question is, why would God give a person a lifetime to make a simple decision? To simply acknowledge their own family. To simply love someone, anybody else. And to acknowledge the truth that's been sitting in them all along. Did you know that the truth of God is in all human beings? Nobody will have an excuse. Not one soul is going to be able to say, I really didn't know. Yes, they know. They chose evil. If a person ends up doing evil, it's because they chose it. Look at your own lives. Did you not choose the sin you did? And you knew there was a right way to do it, but you chose the sin before you sinned. Didn't something come to you and halt you and give you a moment to pause? And then what do we do? We ended up choosing the sin. That was in our sinful life. No one's going to have an excuse. They know. They just choose. And God has given them a lifetime to work that out. So anybody who ends up being condemned at the end, Christ truly never knew them. He never knew them. That means they are fully rejective of Christ. And they've been that way all that time. Is it important to know what God created and what he did not? There was nothing that exists that does not exist by the initial word of God. It does not matter who made it. Oh, and by the way, you have authority over everything but mankind. Remember that. All right. Let me go back. Is that is somebody clarifying the question? Let me see. Oh, somebody said, like faith versus free will. If so, can it be trusted? And why can't it be trusted? Okay, wait a minute. So it says, it says, let's, let's get this straight. Faith. Okay, take faith, right? Having faith in something is believing to a full degree on something, right? Having faith in something, right? Faith versus free will. Faith is actually something you believe in. Free will, right, is your choice to choose of, of whatever is presented before you. Right? So disconnect faith and free will because there's no, there's no comparison between those two now. The, doing the will of God and having free will, right? Like um, if you were forced to do something versus free will, that's how you can compare free will. But faith is simply believing in something. That's what faith is. Faith, right? Now faith, you know, in the Bible, it's just faith. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. What is the substance, which means that tangible thing you hope for, right? The tangible thing you hope for. What do you hope for? Healing. The evidence of something not seen. What is the evidence of something not seen? How can you have evidence of something not seen? I'll tell you how. The evidence of something not seen is that overwhelming knowing that somebody can have it. But it's the substance of things hoped for. Now, in a Christian's life, what is the substance of something hoped for? As far as faith in the word of God. 
Is it not the scripture? You hope for the scriptures, the substance of the scriptures, the meat of the scriptures to be upon your life. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So there's an element in you that surpasses your comprehension that lets you know you can have this. This can happen, right? This can happen. You know, when you're reading something in the word of God. And then you say, well, this can happen. But then when it comes to you, you say, well, it probably won't happen to me, but it can happen. Then you go to the Lord and you say, well, I'm, the Lord probably did walk on water. Now, I can't do it. And I don't think anybody else can, but the Lord did. The evidence of things not seen is that confirmation internally from the Holy Spirit. The substance of things hoped for is when the word of God materializes in your life. That's what you're hoping for. That the word of God materializes in your life. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, right? The only evidence you can have of something not seen. If it's not seen, that means at this moment it does not exist. So how can you have evidence? Internal confirmation. That's how. The evidence of something not seen is that internal confirmation. So what are you talking about there? You're talking about belief. You're talking about a real belief. When you believe in something, right? It seems like those are the, those two components to it in belief. You have a hope for something in your belief, right? But you also have an internal confirmation that it's okay, right? Now, you have different measures of faith. Can your faith be tried? Yes. It can be tried. And God will try your faith also. How is your faith tried? That's when you're hoping for something. Right? Scriptures. You know it can come, but it's not coming. You're being tried. You're being tried. Suppose you need something. Suppose you need something from the Lord. Really bad you need it. And so you say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to believe, Lord, I'm trusting you that this is going to come, and it does not come. And then your life collapses all around it. You're being tried to see if you love the Lord with all of what you are. See, God is not trying you by the thing. He's trying your faith in him. When your faith is in Christ, when your faith is in the Most High, there's nothing that can break it. If your faith is in the thing... That means you just use God to get the thing, and you're going to fall apart. See, when you don't get what you want from what you're following, you stop following it. That's how you're tried. Ding, ding, you know when you get an attitude, when you get tired? Well, I've asked the Lord for this for thousands of years, and I haven't gotten it yet. I'm so tired because you're following him to get something. You're just following him to get something. Somebody said, Paul and Moses were tired. No, they got old. Their spirit was willing. The body was weak. We're not talking about that kind of tired. We're talking about tired of someone trying to use their method to get something out of God. That's why a person gets tired. When you're following the living God and nothing is turning out right in your life, it's impossible to get tired. Because I would be tired. Hmm? I'd be dog tired. But when you follow the Lord, authentically for what he did you don't want anything out of him you want to honor him for what he already did for you you're still breathing you say thank you lord listen it's no joke i can breathe right now right i'm so thankful i can breathe i'm so thankful i can see you have no idea because there was a time when i couldn't breathe i could not i couldn't even get air in to the point of blacking out that cost me six months there was a time when i couldn't see i know what that is that cost me three months. There was a time when I couldn't eat. Nothing would go down my throat. That cost me a couple of weeks. So I know what those things are. And when you recover from something like that, that's when you realize, wait a minute. People haven't made and they just don't know it until something worse comes upon them. When you follow the Father and the Lord for what they have already done, you'll find yourself lacking nothing. If you're following the Lord to get something out of him, you're just making a deal. You're going to
going to be tired all the time because you're not getting your way. You're not going to be tired if you honor the Lord every day of your life. You will not get tired. People have made that popular. Nowhere in the Bible does it ever say, listen, children, you're going to get tired. And you're going to say, I'm tired. No, people made that up. People did that. People get tired because they don't get what they want. For the one who's not looking for anything, who simply wants to honor the living God and Jesus of Nazareth, they don't get tired. They get creative. Hmm? Somebody say Christ wanted uh, not to come from meat. He, he provides. You, you know what? When, they, when Jesus fed all those people with the loaves of fish and with the loaves and the fish, he told his disciples, he said, look, you, you're following me. Because you got fed. And then he turned around and he said, my meat is to do the will of my father. In other words, he said, what feeds me is to do the will of God. You're, 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 you're being motivated to follow me because your stomachs are full. What motivates me, Jesus said, is to do the will of God. That, that feeds me. That fuels me. You cannot get tired that way. You're not going to get tired. People get tired because their method is not working. I hear it all the time. Well, I tried to pray. I tried to do this. I tried to do that, and it didn't work. They're tr still trying formulas. They're trying to put together some formula. Well, maybe if I pray, click my right heel on the wall, scratch my left ear, then the Lord will deliver it. They're still doing the formula thing. That's called witchcraft, by the way. That's witchcraft. When people put together some sort of formula, some sort of method to extract something from the living God, that is, that is witchcraft. But that's what people are doing. But when you're thankful and your soul is full of praise for what he already did, that's the day the Lord will not withhold from you. Anyway, I got off track again. So did, hopefully that person got that about the, the, the uh, faith and the testing of that, right? Testing of that. Because sometimes faith is tried, yes. But that is to see, that is so we can see. Have you noticed in the word of God, God will put us through a test so that we can see who we are. Have you noticed that? He already knows who we are. But he'll put us through a test so that we can see who we are. Somebody said is hospitality a spiritual gift? I think hospitality is the nature of a believer. I think that all too often we go against our own nature because children are full of hospitality when they're little. They are. They're so full of it until they're taught differently. They're full of it. Somebody says to be some Revelation 19 is thrown into the lake of fire or really all the ones that took the mark, yes, all the ones that took the mark are doomed. Yeah, they're doomed. All the ones that took the mark of the beast are doomed. If you take the mark, you're, you're done for. You're done for. Because to take that mark, right? To take that mark. Imagine, is to take the, taking the mark of the beast is just like wearing a uniform, right? If you wear a uniform, you belong to something. You're going to be proud of that uniform. Nobody's going to take the mark of the beast and try to act like they didn't take it. That's not what they're going to do. No, when they take the mark of the beast, they're going to be proud of it. Listen, patriotism. They're going to be patriots. Do you hear me? They're going to be patriots. They're going to be patriots. Lord, have mercy. Open our eyes, Lord. Open our eyes. Open our eyes. Why is no one a patriot for the gospel of Jesus Christ? We're the Lord's patriots. Man is so ready to serve man, to trust fully in mankind. When would they be fully ready to serve Jesus Christ in the gospel he already established? Why won't they keep that above everything else? Some said... Mike, what are those insightful scriptures that led us to the understanding of the mark and the hand of the forehead? That's in, that's in uh, the Old Testament. When God said, he was talking to his own people, and he said to, and when he's talking about the Ten Commandments, right? 
the statutes, commandments, and judgments to have them as a seal upon your forehead. All right, to have those works in your right hand. That was in the Old Testament. Because truly the right hand are your works. And the forehead implies your your thoughts, your mind. Right? If the mark of the beast is in the right hand, the forehead, then the mark of the beast is in the works of a person. It's in the thoughts of a person. Those people who wear the mark of the beast are going to be proud of the beast, patriots of the beast. But that's something that deserves an outline so it won't be forgotten. Right? Somebody said, what is the significance of O positive blood? Could you share a little more light on that? Is O positive is truly a unique blood type. It is a very special blood type. I know the world says R is common. Oh my goodness. Doctor O positive is extremely unique. It is what they call it. They had a nickname for O positive blood types. It is the um uh, the blood cradle or something like that. The blood cradle. Right? Because it's almost the, the mark of creation itself, O positive blood is. It is so much more. It also, this is going to get you, you don't have to believe this, right? But they're teaching people about DNA in a, in the, in a lying way every single time. A professional conversation about DNA and certain triggers came up in a conversation. That happens often because sometimes you have to go over the human body to to replicate biological interactions, right? Especially when it comes to DNA and the building of certain things by proteins and elements. And so, you know, sitting at tables, talking to people, looking at stuff, you start to find out that that uh, places like DARPA, they already know. They already know that DNA is not some double-stranded thing. They already know about the junk DNA. They already know about that. They already know. If they were to tell people, right, like a, like a triple helix is common. How about that one? A triple helix is common. Now, the only people that would refute that are people who are not in those laboratories who discovered the DNA in the first place. It's going to be the people who talk about the books that somebody wrote. The people who believe other people's ideologies. I'm not talking about something somebody wrote. No. When you start hearing things like that, you start indeed extracting properties from it. And you find out uh, that, they, you know, it's in certain blood types. And that it will soon be unlocked and nobody knows why. Nobody knows why it's reacting. the way People's DNA right now, something is happening with with the DNA of people. Something is happening with it right now. And it just so happens that O positive has the authentication bank to life itself. All those people who are O positive, physically, physically they can, they can become much more than what they thought they could be. It's kind of like a, a redhead, right? If you have a redhead with freckles, somebody has red hair with freckles, it's a known fact it's a known fact that their bodies are more resilient than everybody else's. It's a known fact they can eat all sorts of food and survive it and even thrive from it. It's a known fact about that. But they're not telling you about the rest of the people. If they would actually come clean, that oh, the world will be helped so much. They're not telling people about the African-Americans. They're not telling people about the Asians. They're not telling people. Basically, you have two whites, two Caucasian types. You have two yellow types. You have three red types. And you have four African or black types of people. And they're not telling people about the significance of each. They're just not doing it. Each one excels in a certain part of life. Each one each one is gifted to excel in a certain part of life. Each one is physically capable of miraculous things. The problem is they have the four Asian races working 
you know, with something with the two Caucasian races. And then they have the, the six African races working with the with the uh, four red races. They get it all messed up, so everybody seems to be limited because they're influencing things the wrong way. Then they have racism, which is absolutely stupid. If somebody had a physical resiliency and somebody else had a mental resiliency and somebody else had a some other resiliency, wouldn't you put all those together to have one complete working unit or, or, or a, you know, company of people that could accomplish anything? Torn apart, there is no accomplishment. There's no finishing. Right now, the races are torn apart. And Satan never wants the races to come together. That's called unity. And there's nothing impossible with unity. Nothing is impossible with unity. Right? In other words, God put the full potential in humanity. So long as humanity stays separated, they will never see that full potential and that's the safety that's the safety behind it no one person can reach a full potential it takes all the races to reach a full potential medically it takes all the races to reach a full potential i mean a quick full potential so satan has own ideologies of, of dummyism within the races to separate them because he knows what will happen if they get together. He'll be defeated. He'll be defeated. When you guys, let me give you guys an example. When you guys get around a certain type of person, it, it almost triggers you to become a person you never thought you could be. Each one of you should have had that example in your life already. There should have been one person in your life that was not the same color, not the same tone, not the same way as you that triggered something in you to be much more than what you already are. Almost like you went up to another level around that person. You were alive again around that person. Right? That's real. It's not some phony thing. That's very real. And if people were to ever get together, they would reach that full potential, which is why in the Bible you read something, right? That first of all, God has to do this because man will not. But second, every, everybody's going to be restored to one language. One language. Everybody will be unified. God's going to put everything back together again. There will be no limitations. All of what we see right now must be undone. God's going to put it all back together as one again. That's what your father's going to do. Right? He's going to get rid of money. He's going to get rid of all these idols that people have in the earth. They're not one nation is going to be saved from any of that. Right? All of them are going to be toppled. And then the Lord will put together one people, one nation, one tongue. A perfect language we're going to have again. He's going to restore everything. That's the world that's coming. And all this is going to be torn apart. Every single bit of it. None will survive. That's why there is a new Jerusalem. Because the old one is going to get trampled, burnt up, kaput, gone. Right? When it says, what do you think about negative blood types? Well, O negative or something like that. They Listen, all blood types have a, a speciality, but O positive is the big one. It is. It's a big one. It is a big one. I know you guys have heard theories about, you know, RH negative and this and people somehow, right? Somehow people know that that blood belongs to aliens from a world lasagna, the planet lasagna, which is so far beyond Earth that nobody from the planet lasagna has gotten here yet. But somehow people on Earth know that that's some alien blood. Come on, please, 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 please. Have we not figured something out yet? Right? Have we not figured something out? Can I go ahead and say it? All aliens are idiots. They're idiots. They're also chickens. The Lord doesn't encourage us to go around chickens, does he? Because they're hiding. Where are they at? Chickens. They're chickens and idiots. Who in their right mind would come all the way here? First place, to be involved in the mess humanity has caused. Right? And to do what? To teach us that we can be all that we can be. All we have to do is see a military commercial for that. And that's the Army's logo. What's wrong with it? 
that's kind of on the dumb side, right? Not good. We know what they're doing because the Bible lets us know this. People are trying to do everything they can do to get people away from that narrative of the Word of God. No, what they're doing is trying to recreate. They've been recreating their race again. And as time continues, people see more and more creepy things and creepy people. So that means the world is being hybridized. If they can get their children here in this earth, why would the fallen angels want this world occupied by their kids? Why? Anybody know why? Why? I'll tell you why. Because if they did that, right, and they converted humanity, the work of Christ would be voided. He would not end the world. Listen to me. That means the world will not end. Didn't you notice in Revelation they get upset because the earth is being destroyed? And every alien communication, when they communicated with people, has told people what? Well, somebody will say, I was abducted. Well, what did you see? Well, you know, after they tampered with me medically and took my reproductive material, they showed me pictures of the earth being destroyed. So we have to, tr we have to save the trees. We have to save all the trees. Well, why do all the aliens come all the way here to tell us to go with electric cars? Because they can't go anywhere else. Because they're stuck underneath our feet. And if we destroy this earth, they can go nowhere else. This is their last chance. So in every single era of what they call alien abduction, they've been, these so-called aliens have been teaching people to save the planet. Why? Because in doing so, they save themselves. That's why. The kids in Australia, back in the 70s, what did they say? Well, if, if these were small kids. Or what did they look like? Well, they were gray and they had the oval eyes. Or what did they tell us? Well, that we're using, one little girl said, we're using too much technology. And that was before the word technology was out there. She said, we're, we're using too much technology and we're going to destroy the world. Well, what are we supposed to do? Well, we have to learn to conserve the, the, the trees. We're burning up the forests and everything. The same communication from aliens, the so-called aliens has been coming. We know who that is. That's the fallen angels. They're bound. They can't do anything else. They can't do anything else. They can't go anywhere else. So they're trying to tell everybody, hey, don't, 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 don't mess up the prison we're in. We're doomed after this. And we're not in a rush to go to the pit. We're doomed. So if they can get every, if they can pervert you and have you turn away from Christ and have their children all throughout the earth and the work of Christ is done, he did what he did for your salvation. But if he can interrupt and corrupt that, if there's nobody left to say it, which means everybody is corrupted, they don't want to kill you. They want you to turn against Christ. And they'll tamper with anybody to have that done. And they can tamper with your dreams. You better believe it. They can tamper with your dreams. They can give you dreams. They can tamper with your mind. They can give you suggestions and everything else. That's why the Lord said, take captive every thought, every thought, every imagination. You better look at. And anything, anything that would exalt itself above the living God, you better throw it out of your life. Because it's them. What are they doing now? They're mingling their seed with the seed of men. They're putting their children in the White House. They're making their children military commanders and rulers. Their children are in Congress. Those are the ones that influence people that have people out there acting like something's wrong with them. Right? Protesting every leader that would ever walk forward. Christians should know better. Here's the power you have as Christians. You take any leader out there, take the worst leader in the world who's compromised by the devil. Get the Christians together and pray for that leader. The devil has to go. We're praying by consensus. We're praying in obedience. And what we pray for must be. 
because the Lord already said he would do it. So what does the devil not want you to do? He does not want you to pray for your leaders. He wants you to curse your leaders. And every time you curse your leaders, you're doing exactly what the devil wants you to do. Therefore, you'll never get together and pray because if you did, you would change everything. Yeah, that works. You see that? They know exactly what they're doing. They have people wrapped up, tied up, so many doctrines. People are stuck and can't even get out. You see what's happening. What did the Lord made it clear? If my people who are called by my name, that means not those who are not called by his name, those who are called by his name, would do what? Humble themselves and pray, turn and seek his face. Then he would hear from heaven. And he would heal the land. Well, if he heals the land, he's going to heal everything that corrupted the land. Christians have the authority and power here in the earth. God made it so. Why do you think God won't do certain things? Because he gave you the power to do it already. He said, children, get together and do it. And then, but what do we do? We deny that we have the power. And then we do what? Then we start praying and asking the Lord to do something he's already given us power to do. We just don't want to follow his mandate. We're trying to do it some other way, another formula. God taught us to do it in unity, didn't he? He taught us to have one mind and one heart. To do, do things that way. We're to be among like-minded believers. Not sitting around debating all the time. That's, that's foolishness. That didn't accomplish anything. Debating is, is dodoism. It is a debate. No. You can debate about things that man made and did, not what God did. God is finite. You don't debate his word. You ask the father, the originator of that word, what does this mean? That's who you ask, right? Not argue and debate about it. These are practices of flesh and of men. That's why nothing has worked. People don't want to say this, but I'm going to tell you now, things have not been working out. Now, people can ignore that all day. They can cover that up all day long. But why are Christians not satisfied? Why are Christians, they put a smile on, but they're broken a week later. And why are Christians still hunting feverishly? Listen, when you find what you're looking for, you stop searching. When you receive what you prayed for, you rejoice. You don't continue to, you don't sit there and get tired in the prayer, right? What is our mistake? We're not unified. We're individuals. We're always trying to help. One tries to outdo the other. One is trying to be smarter than the other. Why? Why? Because covetousness has crept in. If somebody says something, somebody else gets jealous. And they'll say, well, I said it first. We're talking about Christians, not the world. They'll say, well, I said it first. The Holy Spirit has one voice. It has one conclusion. So it really pays for us to be people of the living God that we may speak with that one voice. Not having many ideas about one scripture, but to see the one scripture with singleness a vision to see the truth of it collectively. That means none of us disagree on what that scripture is. If everybody interpreted scripture by the Holy Spirit, we'd all have the same idea about the one scripture. When you have multiple ideas, you know that, uh, well, you know who is involved. Right? Satan is doing his best to corrupt everything. Oh, and saving the trees in the process because they can't go anywhere. They're done for and kaput. And he is manifesting as an angel of light. So it looks like, listen to me, be careful with this. It looks like the way that's being established among those who are outspoken, it seems to be the right way. It is not. What you might want to do is check the principles of Christ. If anybody is speaking against the principles of Christ, how can they be of the living God? 
there are certain things your father in heaven hates. And if you knew with a word, you could listen for man's or woman's speech. And if you hear them doing what the living God hates, turn away from that person. The Lord said you are to turn away. You're not to have anybody like that in your life. Do you know that? You're not to have such in your life. Why do people keep having these calamitous times in their own personal life? Because they keep inviting people in their lives. They continue to hear people that are doing the opposite of what the living God said to do. God said men would speak abominations and he gave us examples and people are doing just that. We're not to entertain that. We are never to partake of darkness. But people are doing it every single day. And now they're saying it's not darkness. They're defending what should not be defended. All you have to do is know the Messiah's words. For example, for example, let me ask you guys something. Am I supposed to fight another human being for my own personal rights? Yes or no? Oh, no. Somebody says, nope, I'll say nope on that. A big capital nope. Listen, listen, guys. Nobody wants to talk about this subject. I'll go ahead and do it. Homosexuality. Nobody wants to tackle that. Most people just say, oh, it's nasty. That's why. Let me share this with you. Did God make a mistake in how he made you or me? If a person is deformed, say they have one arm shorter than the other. Did God make a mistake? Hmm? Did he make a mistake? No. No. There was a blind man in the Bible that was blind from birth. When you're blind from birth, your eye sockets are caved in. Blind from birth. And they said, well, who sinned in this guy's family that he would come out cursed like that? The Lord had correction. Thank you, Lord, for that correction. First of all, they weren't cursed. It was later explained that man was born blind, and no one warranted that in his family. He was born blind, that Christ would get the glory when he came here to this earth and healed that man. He was born blind for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He was born blind because it was God's will that he be a vessel used to magnify Jesus. When the sight was restored, the man didn't even really know who Jesus was. But he was excited because he knew that was an authentic miracle. He was blind from birth. So God doesn't make mistakes. So where is this coming from? Who is training the children? Who's speaking to children? The public systems are. Right? There are things happening, for example, a young male. He goes out into the world and, you know, first he's, he's all right, but then he's rejected by many he trusted to a degree that he does not trust any males anymore. Oh, and by the way, that began with his own father. So now he disassociates from all males and he finds out he has a better relationship with women, talking and friendship. So he changes what he is. Because he's starved of love the other way. A lot of those folks who choose the homosexual lifestyle, they have similar beginnings. Do you know? Not all of them, but many of them do. And do you know they, because of the way they looked or because of the way maybe they were heavy set or something else happened, people were cruel to them and they were starved of love. So they made a transition. Second, in this day and age, people have doctrines in the world. And you have parents who grew up without any spiritual oversight. And they recommend the doctrine of the world to their children. And so they influence the kids to become a different way. 
some people, they have strong urges in the flesh and they really believe that defines who they are. They don't yet know that they are not the flesh they live in. They don't know that yet. So what happens when a person who is like that is, is talked to on a real level? I'll tell you what, oh, what, what normally happens a lot of times. You start talking to a person like that, they will tell you about that horrific incident that happened where they were starved of love. They will tell you that the guidance of their parents and the lifestyle that they were exposed to warranted such things. They will let you know that they were angry and this, that, and the other. But as soon as you really let them know, once you get past all of that and you let them know, you say, listen, your father loves you the way you are and he did not make a mistake. Things will begin to change. It takes an authentic person to go beyond the flesh to reach another soul and to plea with that soul to consider coming all the way back home. It takes a Christian who's not afraid to talk to anybody like that, but to find out what the real deal is. Once you find out what the real deal is, there's some tragic stories behind why people did what they did. It takes, it takes an anointing, but it can be done. Now, if a person makes the ultimate transition, they change their flesh and everything. Can they come to the Lord and be saved? Can they come back to the living God? Can they give their life to Christ and be saved? Sure they can. Your flesh is kaput. Your flesh is done for. All of us have tainted our own flesh. It's done for. The Lord is concerned about the soul. Now this brings up something else. If the Lord is concerned about the souls of all of us, that means if he has to strip you down to nubs, if he has to make it to where you cannot walk, talk, or anything else to save your soul, he'll do so. He's not forcing you to love him. He's going to take away distractions. If your good looks are a distraction, expect not to keep them. Once we, as Christians, get past the flesh, we can start reaching people. And I'm one of those, I don't allow flesh to hinder me from talking to anybody. If the Lord gives me an unction to go to a person, I do not care what people call me. I don't care. I don't care what rumors start. I don't care. I care about the Lord's work. You know why? When I was young, when I was young, and there were times when I needed someone, anybody, to encourage me, and no one ever came around. Do you know that? No one. No one. Not one person. There were broken times in my life. No one showed up. I will not be the one that will not show up for somebody else. I am not going to be that person. In fact, I believe the Lord did that on purpose so that I would have the fortitude and the compassion to approach people nobody else would approach. I don't care about the flesh. I care about the soul. And I wasn't always that way either. I was just like the people in the world. Ew. That's what I said. Yuck. Ew. Stuff like that. That's what I said. That's what I honestly said. And the Lord straightened me out on that. He did. He did. The Lord can do it through you. But as it says in the Bible, who shall I send? Who's he going to send to go to work? That person that will get no credit for what they're doing. Who's he going to send that's going to gain a bad reputation with the world for the sake of the gospel? Who's he going to send that stands ready to lose everything they have for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Who would throw their own life away so that somebody else can have eternal life? Whom shall he send to go through all that? And to do it faithfully. Who will he send? I'll tell you who he'll send. Somebody who understands it. Somebody who went through it. That means many of you. Hmm. 
Mike, you refer to the U.S. being split with troops at this place is due to the New Madrid Fault going active. No, nope, not the New Madrid. This has to do with the mindset of people with Democrats and Republicans in the USA. Republicans, many of them hate Democrats. And many of the Democrats hate Republicans. Period. Period. You have people out there that have campaigns on a daily basis against the other party. They have taken this party thing to a new level. It's causing people to divide. And Jesus has already spoken a declaration over a house that is divided. In the Bible it says, a house divided against itself shall not stand. That's why no one should be surprised. But in this country, despite the actions of everybody in it, when it starts going up in flames, when geology overtakes it, nobody should be surprised. So that's where we are on that. Hmm. Folks, I'll be back in a few minutes right here at COT. Hold on. I'll be back in a few minutes. You know, everybody, I think I've just found out I talk too much. Do you guys see what time it is? Are you kidding? I talk too much. Anyway. All right. So listen, we had an off week. We did which means we're going to have to make up for some of the uh, time lost. Good questions tonight, by the way. Very touchy subjects. <sighs> we have a long way to go. We can get there. But guys, listen, I'm going to reiterate something before I go. The weather, the weather is going to try all of us. It really will try all of us. Please make sure you have things in order. Please. Please make sure you have things in order. Some of you guys who live in areas, heavily wooded areas, make sure that in your specific town, you have some sort of an exit plan. Please. Check your specific areas for your height, of whatever the topology is in that area, meaning what elevation you are, please. Flooding will be an issue. It'll be a big issue. Please make sure you have those areas nailed down. Please. Please. Be sober about that. All right? Be alert to all of that. Don't panic. But be aware of it. Please be aware of it. Also, the election coming up. We still have yet to talk about some of that. We will this week. But regardless of the outcome, there's going to be a tension involved. Great tension. Keep all those things in mind. And I'll help you out as best I can. Collating some information already. And I've been contacting municipalities all throughout the USA. So I'll keep you guys informed on that. Yeah, we're not far from that 70, from the 40-day mark either. That 40-day mark was the beginning of our stuff. To be prepped. I can't give you details about it, though. It'll become obvious. It'll be very obvious, right? It'll be quite obvious. But listen, for now, for now, we'll go into depth on all of that. But for now, I'm going to say God bless you guys. The player might turn on a little after midnight or 1 a.m. If it does, we're having a midnight hour. I will be recording just in case our recorders are snoozing out. They are incredible at what they do. They are. Yet, yeah, no, I wouldn't speculate about 40 days. It'll unfold. Don't worry, we're all in this together, evidently. It'll unfold. But I want to say God bless each and every one of you guys out there. Don't forget each other. Hold each other up in prayer, right? Let's make sure that everybody is up to speed, meaning. Let's make sure that everybody in this family is okay so that we can collectively start making sure other folks are okay. If we get ourselves situated, we'll be in a better position to reach out 
really reach out. And that is indeed a hope. Not to be an organization that's just an organization, but an organization that always reaches out. That just doesn't talk, but does. Right? And will be able to do things. My prayers are geared toward that area of our act, collective activity. Folks, God bless you. I'm going to see you next time right here at COT. If the player turns on a little after midnight, right? A little after midnight. Well, then just, uh, you know what that is. It's midnight hour. You guys be blessed. Take care of one another. Stay vigilant. Stay prayerful. Pray for your leaders, too. Pray for them. They need it. These are very threatening days. Very threatening. And uh, these health conditions of these leaders can take them instantly. They really can. So keep that in mind. Right? It, it'd be bad to speak awful of someone and then the next day they die. Wouldn't that be bad? Right? You don't want to be in that predicament, that position. So have compassion towards all of them realizing that they have made, some of them make some pretty crazy decisions, right? But they're still here on this earth, and you know what that means. Your Father in Heaven is willing to give them another chance. Remember that. Please remember that. If they live and breathe on this earth, your Father in Heaven has seen fit that they live and breathe on this earth. That means they have another chance. And if they have another chance, they need your prayers. Please remember that. God bless and keep all of you. I'll see you guys next time right here at COT. God bless.